Hey guys, Chris Peach here, and welcome to the Money Peach Podcast. Hey, do you remember growing up learning how to handle money? Yeah, neither do I. So that's why we're here today, to make your money fun again. You know, we're going to talk about the principles in life that actually matter when it comes to managing your money in a way that works. So sit back, relax, and enjoy this episode of the Money Peach Podcast. Before we jump into another amazing episode of the Money Peach Podcast, I want to take a second to talk to you guys about my free budgeting form. You know, the first step to getting on any financial plan is to measure the money. And the only way to measure the money is if you are living on a monthly budget. So after this episode, head on over to moneypeach.com and please download my free budgeting form. There's thousands of people now all over the world who are taking back control of their money using the same form each and every month. The number one habit of highly successful people is they're proactive. So be proactive with your money and get yourself on a budget. What's up, everyone? Chris Peach here with the Money Peach Podcast. This is episode 41. Today's show is going to be a little bit different because I'm going to share with you my own story of starting Money Peach from my kitchen table back in 2015 and growing it to where it is today. I'm going to share with you the ups and downs, some of the wins, the losses, and my top 10 things that I've learned while growing this business from the ground up. So without further ado, let's get started. So over the last couple of weeks, I've been following the podcast. You've noticed a lot of different entrepreneurs coming on the show. I've had John Gaston, episode 38, definitely the most popular episode we've had to date. And he shares his story, which is an incredible story. If you haven't gone back, check that out. Episode 38, he talks about retiring at age 34, growing a business to the point where it sustained itself. He sold the business and now he's you know a retired millionaire at age 34. Um, I had Jason Beck on the podcast a couple of weeks earlier, episode 36. He grew a multi-million dollar business over the course of about the last 20 years, and he's still in business. He's enjoying tremendous success. He shared his story. I had Nate Adams on episode 33. He's the X Games gold medalist um, in, in freestyle motocross, and so he's also at a very, very high level. So one of the trends I noticed over the last couple, I don't know, eight to 10 weeks of doing this podcast is I've had a lot of different entrepreneurs on the show. And so you're hearing their success story at the finish line is what I would say. Many of you have emailed me, um, sent me messages. Well, thank you very much. But some of the, the questions I get is, you know, Chris, would you bring anybody on the show that is maybe not towards the end of the success yet? This may be still in the trenches. And I started laughing going, you mean me? <laughs> so I'm going to share a little bit about my business over the last two years and then some of the things that I've learned, some of the things that I wish I would have known two years ago. So maybe if you're right there and you're getting ready to start your own business or you have desires to start your own business or you have an idea that, you know, this podcast, you could take away something away from this episode, which would be, which would be helpful. Because if I would have had this episode, say two, two and a half years ago, I think my business would look a lot different. I'm very happy with how my business is running right now, but I think it would look a lot differently, be a little bit more productive if I would have known these things say two years ago. So I put together a top 10 list. I mean, think about it. We all like lists, right? We like bullet points. We like lists. So it's my top 10 lists. And we're going to go through one through 10 on this one. So number one, the number one thing I wish I would have done when we started Money Peach is I needed to take my goals and I need to put them on paper. Now I had an idea of what I wanted Money Peach to look like, right? And at the time, I think I was afraid to put the goals on paper because what if I fail, right? What if I fail? What if I don't reach my goals? As soon as I put them on paper, now they're real, which means I can fail at something real where if it's not on paper, if I don't write down my goals, I'm not intentional about it, then if I don't get there, I was like, well, maybe it wasn't ever a goal in the first place and it kind of gives you a little bit of a way out and I don't want you to do that. Okay, here's what I would suggest you do. Here's what I do now. And just doing this small exercise over the last couple months, I've had tremendous success from it. I've had my my business has grown more so in the last few months than I ever have had before. And it starts off with goal setting. Now, here's one of the things I'm going to challenge you to do. This is going to sound crazy. I want you to write down 100 goals. Yes, 100 goals. This is not going to happen overnight. Get out a piece of paper or get Evernote out in your phone, and I literally want you to write down 100 goals. Now you're thinking, I don't have 100 goals. I promise you, you do, okay? Because remember, you got to look deep inside your business, right? If you're going to dedicate a portion of your life, a big chunk of your life to growing your business, then it's important that you have goals to reach, right? Goals to work towards, you know, some kind of tangible objective. So... 
you know, when I was doing this for the first time, you know, obviously the goal, your first goal is probably going to be, you want to make X amount of dollars by this date, right? And by the way, you've heard the term SMART goals, I'm sure. And if you haven't, it's just a little acronym, SMART, S-M-A-R-T. It's specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and timely. So basically when you're creating goals, they should, they say you should create SMART goals. That's, that's here, neither here nor there for me. What I want you to do, just plain and simple, you don't have to remember, remember an acronym. It's just make the goal on paper, right? The first thing I want you to do is write out, here is my goal on paper, okay? I want you to write out a 100 different goals. So it could be, I want to you know, make a certain amount of money. I want to leave my job. I want to buy this car. Um, I'll share with you. I'll be straight honest with you. So when I'm going through my 100 goals, you know, I have to be as extremely specific as I can. So I want targeted goals. So one of my goals, believe it or not, out of my 100 is I want a red Tesla Model S. Now, I didn't just say I want a new car. I put down the specific model and the color because that becomes real now. I see that car in my mind, right? We do that with all the different types of goals. You need to be specific. And yes, you need to get to 100. Now, once you have a list of 100 goals, and like I said, this might take a few days, but anytime you have the idea like, ooh, I would love to travel more or whatever it might be. It can't be vague. They need to be actual goals. Put them down on paper. Then once you have your 100, I want you to go to the next step and I want you to put dates next to them, right? I'm going to make this much money by this date. I'm going to pay off all of my debt by this date. I'm going to pay off my house by this date. I'm going to travel to Europe on this date. I'm going to buy my red Model S Tesla on this year, this date, right? Just doing that. Think about this. 95% of the people don't do this, right? 95% of the people aren't willing to take the time to write out 100 goals. So you can ask yourself right now, do you want to be like 95% of the people who are getting by or do you want to be like the 5%? The 5% of the people, if you look at highly successful people, anybody that I've interviewed on this podcast will tell you they write down specific measurable goals, okay? And it's, it's, cra- it's across the board. I mean, every highly successful people you'll meet, you'll interview, ask them, do you believe in goal setting? Do you write down goals? And they will tell you across the board, yes. So if you want to do something that, you know, highly successful people are doing, they're writing down their goals on paper. A uh, little side story here. So on episode 38, after we did the podcast with John Gaston, uh, we were talking afterwards and we were talking about goal setting. He's huge on goal setting. And he goes, Chris, I goal set for everything. And I said, really? And he goes, everything, every part of my life, I set goals on paper. And he goes, in fact, he goes, believe it or not, I wrote down before I met my wife, before I knew who my wife was or I met her, I wrote down the goal of what my wife would look like, what she would act like, what she would be like, how old she would be. I mean, to a T, okay? He writes this down on a piece of paper and he even put, he was going to meet her within six months, okay? Now, the crazy thing was he saved that piece of paper. So this piece of paper is 20 something years old. And he shows it to me. It's beat up. It's worn out. And I'm telling you, if you read through this paper and then you saw his wife, you would almost be guaranteed that he wrote these set of standards or whatever he had on his goals after he actually met his wife. But the point was this. He said, you know, I had this goal on this paper of the wife that I wanted to have, the mother of my kids I wanted to have. And I looked at it every single day. He looks at his goals every single day. And he says, I was looking at these goals. And I remember when her name's Tiffany, Tiffany walked into my life. And I knew right away, right? Because I had already put her down on paper. I knew the goals that when she came in, it wasn't a mistake. I knew exactly who she was, why she was there. He knew. He knew right away because of his goal setting. Now, that's, you know, that's a relationship goal. But what about your business goal? Go back to being an entrepreneur. You know, what do you, what, what does it look like? What does your business look like? And you, you, the cool thing about goals is they're yours, right? You don't have to share them with the whole world if you don't want to. They're yours and they change over time, right? As we grow, they change. I can tell you in the very beginning, the goals I had for Money Peach did not include a podcast. I really didn't listen to podcasts back then. And fast forward to today and we're sitting here doing a weekly podcast. So, write down your goals on paper. Become part of that top 5% of the people who are writing goals instead of not writing goals. 100 goals. The homework for this episode is 100 goals on paper, right? 100 goals on paper. So that's number one. All right. Number two, work for free. I have down work for free. So Many of us, myself included, we either have a job right now that we work at and we like or we don't want, we don't like anymore. We want to transition. And right now we're used to getting paid, right? We're used to 
working and if we're used to putting in some effort, putting in work and getting paid. What we're not used to is working for free. And so this is, this is huge because almost every single person you'll ever talk to that started a business, I'll put it this way. I've interviewed a ton of people. I ask a lot of questions. I have yet to meet anyone that said they started their business and started making money right away, right? When you start doing something in the beginning, a lot of of it in the beginning is not to make money, it's to learn. You're there to learn. You're there to get results for you so you can look at what this works, this doesn't work. So in the beginning, I would say don't focus on the money, okay? Because you're gonna be disappointed, right? You might be part of that top one to 2% that hits it big right away, and good for you. If you do, amazing. But for the other 98% of the people out there, you're gonna have to put in work for free. You've heard the term sweat equity. That's what that is. And I'll kind of give you an example of my own business. When I started Money Peach, I didn't even know how to monetize it, right? I didn't know how to make money with a blog that no one had ever been to before. (laughs) You know, I had no idea how to monetize my business. Monetize meaning how to make money. Let's just be honest. How do you make money? So it wasn't until about six to eight months in that I learned actually how to make money, but I still didn't make money then. I tell people all the time, I went an entire year working inside my business, you know, learning all the ins and outs. Before I started hiring people to replace task level stuff, I wanted to know how to do them myself. Plus, I didn't have any money to hire them. So I worked for free and I would challenge you and say, I even, it probably cost me a little money because I don't think I was breaking even. I think it was actually upside down every month, putting money into my dream. But never once did I lose focus of why, right? I mean, hours and hours and hours. I'm a full-time firefighter. So on the side, I'm doing about 20 to 30 hours a week for free inside my business. And so a lot of my friends, my family, my neighbors, they thought I was crazy because I can go work overtime for the fire department or I can go do something else and get paid right now. But this was my idea, this goal in my head, this dream that I had to grow this business. And I had to understand, I had to be willing to accept that I was going to work for free in the beginning. Now, I'm not saying work for free forever, but I'm saying the very beginning, work for free. So when you're my first coaching client I ever had, I didn't charge them a dime. I had never coached anybody before. I needed to coach, you know, five to seven clients before I was even thinking about charging anybody for my services. Cause I wanted to know A, they were good, you know, B, they had results. And I also wanted to build out testimonials. So how could I do that charging up front? I wouldn't have had any business. So in the very beginning, work for free, be willing to do that. Not forever, but in the very beginning. That's number two. Number three is accept failure. Now, Nate Adams talks about this big time in episode 33. So Nate Adams, you know, he freestyle motocross, wins X Games gold. He's on top of the world, okay? On top of the world, just won a gold medal at X Games, which is like the Olympics for his sport. Not a month later, he breaks his femur. All those sponsors, all that money that was coming in, all of these gigs that he was getting completely went away like that with a broken femur. They you they can't use you anymore. And he had to accept that failure, not as a permanent setback, but as a failure as, okay, now I have to adapt and overcome. Now, I'll tell you this. When you accept failure, it makes you that much better, right? Every single person I've ever met in business, the John Gastons, the Jason Becks that was on the podcast, the Nate Adams, the Ben Arredondos in episode 30, um, they've all had huge setbacks, not setbacks. We're talking tremendous setbacks, setbacks that would break any of us, right? And you ask them, what, why didn't you give up? Why didn't you throw it in? You had a, you had a gold medal. You'd already made a couple million dollars. When, when you hit failure, why did you get back up? And they all pause and they think, you know, I never really thought about it at the moment. I just knew that I needed to get there. And so think about that. When you have a failure, you know, when that comes up, you know, it's going to hurt and it's going to make, it's going to make you feel like you are a failure. And that's not it at all. We have to fail before we can move forward. There's no such thing as just having success after success after success. There's tons of failures along the way, right? There's plenty of stories you can read out there of people that failed. I mean, you can go and look at stuff like Microsoft or Apple. You know, there was tremendous failure in the beginning, right? Tremendous failure. And now we look at them as these these giant successes, right? Well, how did they get there? They had to fail. And I'll tell you this personally, in my own business, Um, I've had a couple different ideas, you know, I tested a couple different ones and some of them, one of the ideas I tested in the very beginning cost $5,000. And so we tested the idea and it did not work out well. It was a failure and it was tough. You know, when you're not making a lot of money in your business and you invest $5,000 and it completely bombs, it's a tough feeling, but 
it reminded me is I had to go through that experience to know what it feels like to fail. But also now I know that that wasn't the direction I should have been going right now. I know for sure I have the proof, right? I just threw $5,000 away or that's what it felt like, but it was a $5,000 education knowing, okay, I'm not going to do that again. I'm going to move forward. Now I can narrow down things that aren't working versus things that are working. So remember, accept failure because it's going to happen. So number four is you need to be learning as much as you can. I mean, be a absolute sponge, especially in that first year. I'm talking listening to podcasts like you're doing now, reading anything you can, um, reading books. I'm a huge fan of audiobooks right now. So I put down um, my favorite audiobooks right now. My number one is called The War of Art by Stephen Pressfield. Now, this was recommended to me by a friend, and the basis of this book is creativity, right? Sometimes we think we're not creative. Sometimes we think there's no way I could be creative. We're all creative in different ways. And the problem is, the reason why we don't think we're creative is because we're afraid to go out and become creative. We're afraid to go out there and do that. Kind of goes back to earlier what I said is, you know, we don't want to fail, right? We don't want to fail. We don't want people to think we're, you know, stupid or, or we don't want people to think negatively of us. And so there's so many stories in this book that you'll hear about of people that almost didn't pull the trigger. I mean, people that were right there on the cusp and they're like, no, this is garbage. I'm not going to do it. And then you fast forward and you're like, oh my gosh, these people are huge successes and they almost packed it in. So if you're right there thinking, I have this idea, but I just don't, I don't want to be a failure. I don't want anybody to think negatively of me. You know what? That has to be put to the side, right? Who gives a crap type thing? right? This is your life. This is your dreams. These are your goals. And one of the things you're going to learn from this book is when you start thinking about how much other people care about you or worry about you or are thinking about you, you'll realize they have their own set of problems, their own set of issues. They don't have time to be focused on you. So a lot of times we have this thing that what are people going to think of me? They're going to think something of you for one second and move on because they have their own life to think about. So Stephen Pressfield, and I'll have links to all of this in the show notes, but Stephen Pressfield's The War of Art. As far as reading books, the number one book I'll recommend to people right now, and probably my most gifted book over the last two months, three months, is The Tools of Titans by Tim Ferriss. Now, I will tell you, I have a friend right now. He just started his business. He's doing a physical fitness training business. He just started it about three weeks ago. I mean, he is in the trenches. This podcast has a lot of him in mind. And so I said, hey, what what made you decide to jump in and start this business? And he goes, you know, after listening to your podcast and then once you gave me that book, that's when I turned the corner. And this, so this book is powerful. This book is called Tools of Titans, and it's going to walk you through um, all these different stories, unique stories of all these titans. There's a couple hundred different entrepreneurs in there from all different walks of life that are going to share with you their wins, their losses. It becomes real, right? So you're going to really like that book. I'll have uh, links for there. Um, another great book is Start by John Acuff, and that's just getting started. If you're right there at the front edge and you're looking to get started, I would say that's a great book. And then if you're just inside your business and you're needing a little bit of help to think bigger, I would say Secrets of the Millionaire Mind by T. Harv Ecker. So there's another set of homework right there. There's four different books I recommended. I would say pick one of them and get started. So number four was reading, learning, listening to podcasts, learning as much as you can so you can start jumping in and growing with your business, okay? So this transitions in nicely to number five. So number five is finding help or finding a mentor. Now, going back to episode 38, I tell you inside the episode that John Gaston, the person that retired at age 34, he shares a story, but how I know John is he's my mentor. I meet with him about once or twice a month. We sit down, we have these lunches. And we talk shop, we talk business, we talk life. The reason why I seeked him out wasn't because of his success in business. That was part of it. But I looked at him and I said, the way he interacts with other people, his relationships with people, um, the way he carries himself, I look up to that. So think of this person in your life. You might not be able to find somebody right away, but keep your eye out. And you're going to start noticing that naturally you're attracted to somebody because of the way they treat people, because the way they carry themselves, because of their morals, because of their ethics, and yes, because of their business sense, right? And so, so many times, for the longest time, I've had this idea that I want to go meet with John and have him help me. And I was so afraid to ask. I was thinking, I don't want to waste his time. You know, he has other things going on. And what I learned from John, what I've learned from other people is there are so many people out there who have had success that would love to help and no one's asking them, right? And they're not going to go around and just keep offering it up. No one's asking them. So if you have that person in your mind, 
I challenge you this homework assignment three for this episode is send them an email, send them a text, get them on the phone, take them for coffee and just say, look, I really look up to you. I think what you're doing, what, how you handle yourself is incredible. I see myself being a reflection of you someday. I see myself being a lot like you. With that said, I need to learn from you. And here's something else you're going to learn is a lot of those times, those mentors that you seek out, they have mentors themselves. They have people that they meet with. So of course they're willing to help you because they've had the same help that you're seeking out. So that's number five, find help, seek out a mentor. All right, so transitioning now into number six, there is a quote I love from episode 30 of the Money Peach podcast with Ben Arredondo. You know, some of the takeaways, one of the things he says at the very end is he says, you have to take a tornado of action. I love that saying, a tornado of action. Once you're learning, once you're reading, once you have your goals on paper, once you have a mentor who's, you know, giving you some opportunities of, you know, try this, try that, giving you some direction, it's now up to you to take a tornado of action, right? Action speaks volumes. There's so many people out there that know what to do and they don't take action and they don't understand why they're not having success. Now, in my business, this is something that John has helped me with tremendously. See, when I seeked out the mentor and John sits me down, and he says, Chris, I think we need to start doing this inside your business. What do you think? The answer is I'm going to try it. And not only I'm going to try it, but I'm going to take extreme action in it because those people are investing time in you. You're investing time in your business. Remember, you're working for free and now they're investing time in in you and you don't want to let that person down. You don't want to let anyone down and how you show them that you take them seriously. You take a tornado of action approach. So, you know, for us, it was, you know, with our blogs, we wanted to increase exposure with our blog posts. So we started putting out more blog posts. Um, one of the things was I wasn't doing a podcast. I felt like I didn't have time for it. Well, you know, if it's important, you want to do it, you need to make time. That's when we had to transition and start looking at who can we hire, who can we help to transition so we can do more podcasts, so we could do more blog posts, so we can make the website run more efficiently, right? We needed to start taking tornado of action. So that is another part of the piece is take action and don't just take action, take a tornado of action. So number seven, moving on, is say yes and figure it out, right? Opportunity is going to come your way. And so many times we feel like, oh, we're not qualified for that. No, no, I'm not, I'm not there yet. I need to have, you know, some kind of certification next to my name. I need to have, you know, this degree. And if I believe that, I would not be here today. I'll give you an example. When I first started, you know, in the beginning, I was doing all volunteer stuff. I was helping people with their money volunteering because I truly like doing it, right? And I have a friend, he's actually going to be on the podcast next week. One of the things he said, he says, Chris, why don't you charge for this? I mean, you're providing a ton of value. Why don't you charge for this? I was helping people with their budgets in the very beginning. And I said, well, I'm not certified. And he's like, well, since when do you need to be certified just to help people? And I thought, yeah, you're right. I, you know, I never thought about that. I just had this excuse in my mind that I had to be certified. You know, I have a friend that she, you know, runs a nutrition blog. She's a fitness coach. You know, I think a lot of times she questions herself saying, well, I don't have a master's in nutrition science. And I'm like, yeah, but the amount of people you're helping, they don't care about the degree on your wall. They care about getting results. So I think in the beginning, she probably thought I wasn't qualified enough. And now she's tremendously qualified because the lives she's changing, the results she's getting for people is tremendous, right? Think about this. When have you ever gone into your doctor's office and before you meet your doctor, you want to go see their degree on the wall to make sure they're legit, right? It's word of mouth. It's how they treat you when you first walk in, right? So going back to what I said is say yes and figure it out. So I remember early on, you know, I was putting myself out there as much as I possibly could. And I remember at the very beginning, I had somebody send me a message on Twitter saying, we have a uh, small business here in town and we'd love for you to come speak at it. What's your rate? Now I'm sitting there going, what's my rate? I've only been blogging for about two months now. I didn't even know I had a rate. (laughs) So um, I, I just said, yes, yes, I can do it. And so right away, I seeked out somebody who I knew did speaking and I had them give me some ideas and I just said yes and then figure it out later. What that's going to do is that's going to do two things. Once, it's going to make you a believer in yourself. It's going to make you believe in yourself. And two, it's going to hold you accountable. Because when you tell somebody yes, you're going to follow through with it versus maybe. So if you have opportunity, tell people yes and figure it out, especially in the beginning. So number eight is attend conferences and seminars. This is huge. 
I will tell you this. So one of my friends invited me to this conference. I met him through the financial blogging world and he invited me to this conference. And I was like, no, I don't need to go to that. That sounds stupid. You know, it's on the other side of the country. I don't have time to fly over there. I got this blog I'm working on. And he goes, no, 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 you need to go. Come on. You're serious about business. You need to go. And so I flew across the country. I live in Phoenix, Arizona, and I flew all the way to Charlotte, North Carolina. I go to this conference and right away I realized what my buddy was telling me. I was going to go learn, but I was also going to network like crazy. And a lot of the guests that I've had on the podcast, a lot of some of my best friends that I've had in business, the mastermind group that I'm in, we do a weekly mastermind now where we have people from all over the country. We meet together once a week. There's six of us. And we get together and we talk shop. We talk business. All of these relationships were formed by going to conferences, going to seminars. So what I will tell you is if you're not somebody that feels that conferences or seminars are places you need to be for the learning part, which I think is foolish, we could all learn something. I want you to look at it this way. It's for the networking part, right? Because think about this. You're starting your business right now and you might be doing it from home. You might be doing it, you know, in your garage and really it's you and maybe one other person if you have a partner and it's kind of a lonely place to be. And then once you go to these seminars, you go to this conference you're going to be around hundreds, if not thousands of like-minded people, and it is going to be extremely motivating. You're going to learn a ton, and you're going to build some tremendous relationships. Now, Jason Beck, in episode 36, he says one key thing. He says, you never know who the smallest person will be to affect your business the most. And this is the absolute truth, because some of the people I've met at these conferences at a little lunch turn out to be such a big part of my business a year later that I could never have seen coming. So I'm telling you, look it up, you know, Google, just go into Google and type in your niche. There's conferences, there's seminars, and here's the byproduct. They're usually tremendously fun. I mean, you go to these places, you learn, and you also do a little bit of party and it's a lot of fun. So that is a bonus, right? All right. Number nine, it's time to start turning into having extreme confidence. Now this is tough. This was even tough for me. So one of the books I read recently, a guy, Brian Tracy has this book out and I was reading this book. And one of the things he says in there is he tells you, he wants you to say to yourself in the mirror, I like myself. I like myself. I like myself. He wants you to do it 50 times a day, every single day. And I'm thinking, this is hokey pokey. This is crazy. I'm going to go look in the mirror and say, I like myself. I like myself. I like myself. And I thought about it. I'm like, well, I mean, this guy has had a ton of success over the years. He's mentored and trained tens of thousands of peoples. He's a New York Times bestselling author, I think multiple times over. And he's telling me to do something and I'm telling him, no, this sounds stupid. And I thought, well, what do I have to lose? So one of the things he talks about in this book is it's proven that something chemically changes in your brain. It's biology that when you tell yourself over and over again that you like yourself or you tell yourself that you're going to be a winner, you tell yourself that you're going to do something over and over again and you do this over and over and you don't stop, what you're going to notice now is you're going to start believing it. You're going to start having extreme confidence. I remember the first time I ever did any kind of speaking or even the first time I did a podcast interview, my heart was racing. My palms were sweaty. I was so nervous. Fast forward to now, now I have extreme confidence. And a lot of that comes with repetition, but a lot of that comes with the self-motivation, the saying that I like myself or saying that I'm good at interviewing people on a podcast or I'm good at running my business or I'm good at being a dad or I'm good at being a friend. You know, when you tell yourself this, it sounds crazy. But again, if you interview some of the most highly successful people out there and a lot of the people on the podcast will tell you the same thing that, yes, I believe in goal setting. Yes, I believe in self-motivation. Yes, I believe in public proclamation. Yes, I believe in these things. And you want to be successful. You're here for a reason. You're listening to this podcast. You're reading books. You're trying to, you know, grow your business, grow your life in every aspect of your life. Then why not try it? So self-talk. Self-talk is huge, which gives you extreme confidence because you're going to need it because there's going to be those times where you're going to hit failure. And when you have extreme confidence, it's so much easier to overcome that. There's going to be times where you're working for free and you're thinking, what am I doing? But when you have extreme confidence, you're going to overcome that. And there are going to be times where you're dead tired. There's going to be times where you are completely exhausted. But when you have extreme confidence, you're going to go out and make a tornado of action happen. Now, number 10, this is the last one. Number 10 
is you need to start planning for success. Now there's a, there's a saying that there's this dog and the dog gets out of, out of the backyard, starts chasing this car and it's chasing the car down the road and it finally catches up to the car and it gets there and it goes, Oh crap. Now what do I do? I have this car. I've got there. I've made it. Now what do I do? And so some of the things that I've learned growing my own business is you need to start planning for success because you never know exactly when it's going to come. And sometimes it comes exponentially fast. And if you don't plan for it, that's when a lot of businesses fail. That's where they get overextended. They don't, they can't handle the volume and they fail. So as you're writing down your goals, we started step one was writing down goals. We're going to come back to it now. Step 10. I want you to plan for success. I want you to put down on paper. Here's what it looks like in one year. And here's how I'm going to manage this, right? Here's what it looks like in five years, and here's how I'm going to manage this. Now, let me give you some examples of how I do this in my own business. So when I started moneypeach.com, all it was was a blog, and I was blogging one article every single week. Um, I didn't really pick a day. It was just kind of whenever I felt like it, and I realized if I was going to run this like a business, I needed to be a little more deliberate about it. I need to be more intentional. So what I did is I said, okay, every single Tuesday, I'm going to put a new blog post out. I needed a plan for that. And then once people started coming to the blog, then I noticed, okay, then I started getting tons of comments, tons of emails, right? So things started to get a little more hectic because now I had emails to respond to. I had comments to respond to on the blog and I still wanted to write. So what I needed to do is I needed to find somebody to help me with that. So the first thing I did is I found somebody to help me with the website, right? That was something that I didn't need to do any longer, I learned how, but I needed somebody to help me. Then I needed somebody to help me with posting. Then I needed, so I started adding step by step. Every time I hit a certain level of success, I built from there and I had somebody help me. Now in the beginning, that's going to eat into your profits, right? People don't work for free, but it allows you to grow that much faster. So fast forward today, you know, I have somebody that's helping me with this podcast. You know, I don't produce it because I don't know how. I have somebody that helps me with all the posts now, not writing them, but publishing the posts on the blog. I have now two different writers in Money Peach that are writing alongside me inside the blog. And I have somebody that now proofreads all of our stuff because I sent out too many blog posts and emails that had errors in them. And now I have somebody helping with social media because it became the point where I would find success. And if I didn't hand it off to somebody else, there was going to be either I was going to get overwhelmed and quit or I was going to stop growing. So think about that. You know, what's going to happen? You know, when you have, you know, you think about if you're starting a business and what's going to happen when I have X amount of customers, how am I going to handle that? Put that down on paper because it's going to come sooner than you think. So that's all I have for today, guys. Thank you so much for being here. I hope you guys got a lot out of it. We'll have links to anything I talked about in the show notes. And then leave me a comment. Leave me a comment in this. Let me know what you think. Let me know who else you'd like to hear on the blog, who you want to hear from. And we'll try to do that. I want to customize this so you guys are getting as much out of it as possible. And uh, so we'll see you guys next week with another amazing episode of the Money Peach Podcast. Take care. Hey there. Do you ever feel like you're living paycheck to paycheck? Are you stressed at the end of every month and you're just praying you're going to make it through to next payday? Or are you tired of trying to figure out this whole money thing alone and you just simply want someone to point you in the right direction? Well, it's officially time to forgive yourself for any of the mistakes that you've made in the past, and it's time to learn a proven system that works, and that's Awesome Money Course. So don't forget to check out AwesomeMoneyCourse.com, my number one online program for taking you from eh with your money to showing you how to be awesome with your money, and that's AwesomeMoneyCourse.com. Thanks again for tuning in, and we'll see you guys next week. Da ba dum da ba dum da ba dum da